just can't wait to get on the road. He'll be on the road soon. President Trump, in fact, will be traveling to Southeast Asia this fall. He will likely make the trip, though, without the help of one key advisor, a chief of protocol. And since taking office in January, the president hasn't nominated anyone for that position. And when he does pick someone, it could take the Senate up to a year to confirm the president's nominee. Robert Hickey, deputy director of the Protocol School of Washington, joins us via Skype. Robert, thanks so much for joining us. I'm delighted to be here. What in the heck is a, you know, a chief protocol officer and why is it so important to the president of the United States? Well, in this case, it's the uh, chief of protocol of the United States. And the chief of protocol is the personal representative of the president to the whole diplomatic community. That specifically is in Washington, but it really could be any accredited ambassador mm -hmm. or, or consul or official anywhere in the United States. And, you know, it used to be that People thought in the future we'd just do everything on the phone or on Skype, but people still like to meet each other. So the chief of protocol is responsible for creating that environment that when the leaders actually meet, they can focus on the work they have to get done and not focus on all the incidentals. What are those incidentals, the things people don't think about? For instance, I think I was reading uh, just about whether or not you shake uh, uh, someone's hand in a certain culture. Explain how important it really is. Uh, you mentioned shaking hands. There's there's a certain amount of etiquette involved anytime you have people from different cultures coming together, because culture is specific to a culture, and you know we all know that that even like our grandparents' houses had different cultures in them and different etiquette. So when you bring people from around the world together, it get it gets especially more complicated. So it has to do with even like you know, about schedules and how they like to do things, how many people they travel with. They like to consider like flags have to be taken care of. There are flags in the pictures. There are gonna be ceremonies set up. There's gonna be various kinds of, uh, are spouses included or not spouses included? That can be very cultural. So it's everything from the event where you actually focus on like a, a reception or a state dinner, or even, a, or, or maybe it's even a, a, an a summit of some sort, to all the way down to the minutia of if they're going to be gifts, are they right. going to be like presented, or are we going to have them in a bag and put into the room because we don't focus on what we're giving? So it's it's gifts, it's visits, it's ceremonial issues, it's everything that happens when heads of state, and specifically that means our president, our vice president, our secretary of state, when they are dealing internationally, the chief of protocol is the one calling the shots. Hey, Robert, it, it reminds me of a, a big incident that happened back in the Obama administration. I know the, 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 the chief of protocol's job is to make sure the president and first lady don't embarrass themselves. Uh, the Obamas visited or, or, or met with Queen Elizabeth for the first time, and Mrs. Obama put her hand on, on the queen's back, not realizing protocol was you don't touch the queen. Don't touch her. Um, so we know the Trumps are scheduled uh, perhaps in the next few months or, or later this year to go visit uh, with the Queen. Do you think that it's absolutely a necessity to have a chief of protocol so something like that doesn't happen again? Well, fortunately, the State Department has a fantastic staff of career professionals who know a lot of that. But they, and, and but one thing that the chief of protocol is, is the, tr is the chief of protocol is a trusted advisor of the president himself. So it's someone that he will really listen to. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. somebody, because what happens is, is that, you know, it's great to have someone in another department tell you how to do things. Sure. Think, well, why do they know that? But when it's your chief of protocol and he says, I want you to walk out there, you're going to stand in this spot, that's what you're going to say, and this is what's going to happen, then that means that the president is free to think about only what he right. wants to about, which is the content of what he's doing and building yep. the relationship. So just to make sure, you're pretty confident he's not totally flying blind out there by himself. There's someone from the State Department that's got his back. Uh, the, the State Department has career people in all these positions that are going to be doing a fantastic job. Okay. Uh, but can I just mention one thing, sure. which is, is that, that, that in our culture, we're very egalitarian. I mean, it's even in, our even in our Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. One of the things that happens is, is this, our chief of protocol has a very high diplomatic rank. So when he meets these people, in some ways, he is their peer. Right. Internationally, in status cultures, they don't like to talk to somebody on a lower level. 
Interesting. So, so we, we elevate them to that level of, of, an, of an ambassador. So yeah. fascinating to hear about all this. Robert Hickey, Deputy Director at the Protocol School of Washington. Thanks so much for joining us. I Thank appreciate you. it. You're welcome. After hearing all that, I think I need a chief of protocol. I know. Wouldn't that be like nice I couldn't walk around without it. It's I don't want to nice. offend anybody. It would be lovely, yes. <laughs>